Hi everyone, this is Dana, and in this video I'll show you a few ways you could use ThingLink with language students or with other students. So ThingLink is a digital tool that lets you turn an image into an interactive graphic. And if you go to their website and go to Explore, you can see many different examples of how people have done this. Now, it does have a premium plan and a free one, and I'm going to show you some things that you can do with a free plan. So first, here's a simple vocabulary activity that you can do. So I got an image from the internet, and if you don't mouse over it, you just see the image as it was. Now, when you mouse over, the, over it, you see all these hotspots, and each of these is showing the students the car parts, and I put some text that shows the name of the car part, and I also put the pronunciation. Tire. So when you hover over that hotspot, you can read the text and you can hear the sound that you recorded as well. So a nice thing about this is that you can have the pronunciation right there, and another thing is that the students doesn't, doesn't need to see all the labels all the time. So unlike with a static graphic, they can first try to remember the word and then they can check it by mousing over it. And here's how you do that. So you just go to your main account page and go create. And because this is a free account, all I can do is to use images. So you can either get the URL of an image or upload one. So I'm going to upload one. And let's see, my car. Okay. And now you just click to add your tags. If I want to do the headlight here, this panel appears, so you can put links, uh, you can put text, and you can add images and also audio. And in my case, I only put text. And I want to make it a bit bigger because it's just one word. Okay, you can make it bold as well. And what I did here also, I have my audio. So I just recorded these separately in Audacity. And now it has the pronunciation here. In the same way you can add other things as you wish. So now we just save it. And when you're done with all of them, just save the image. And we can do a similar thing with text. So for example, I have this text. Um, I wrote it in Microsoft Word and then I took a screenshot and uploaded it here. And then you can add different things to it. So here I have the audio in case students want to listen to it as well as read. Virtual reality, often just called VR, and then I also have some definitions or synonyms. And in some cases, it's easier to put a picture instead of describing what that thing is. Or in some cases, you might want to have both, like here. And then here I'm talking about some apps. And to give students a better idea of what I'm talking about, I linked some YouTube videos. So the way to do that is, like I showed you before, you select the place where you want to have your hotspot and then, as you can see here, you can add different things. So because this is a YouTube video, I just added the link and then it usually puts its text there, but you can change this and just put your own text and you can always add um, a different audio as well or another image. Okay, another example. Let me save this and get out of here. So another example. This is an assignment that asks students to find information on a few cities and share that information here. So this is a collaborative activity. I made a collage with uh, pictures. Uh, these are public domain pictures from the web. 
Um, and I made this collage using Canva. And I already started uh, by adding information about Boston. I put the um, directions here. So look for information about the cities. What can you do there? What can you see or read or visit? Um, any interesting information about the history. And um, I started by adding information about Boston. So um, this is a link to a website where students can read more about the Freedom Trail. So in this case, I added both a picture and the link and this sends you to the website. You can eat delicious Boston cream pie. So here I just added text and a photo. Um, There's the link to a video. So you can take a whale watching tour and this shows you a little bit what that would be like. And then this is a museum, a very interesting museum in Boston, the Tea, tea Party Ships and Museum. So again, I chose an image and then this is the link to that museum where students can read more about it. So what I'm expecting them to do is to look for information on these other cities and do the same thing and just add many, many links here. And for a final example, you can take a diagram, any diagram, and just add a lot more information to it. Now, in this case, actually, this uh, very, very good infographic on copyright and fair use, which was a topic of discussion with my student. Um, so it already has a lot of information, so I didn't want to add too much to it, but I did have some supporting um, videos and texts. So when you hover, you can see, so here there's a short introductory video that gives them like a nice overview to the topic. And then for each of these things, copyright frequently asked questions. This is a really, a really nice page that explains more about copyright. And then a video that shows the various Creative Commons licenses, information about the public domain, and information about fair use. And then here, I also have a fair use quiz. So this is a link to a really nice activity from MIT libraries that helps students check their understanding on fair use. After they're done with that, they can go ahead and uh, learn more about copyright and about how to decide whether they can claim fair use on something or not. So you can do this with any diagram, um, especially if you have one that is much simpler. Thingling gives you a way to add extra information to it. Now, when you are done with creating this, so you can either just leave it here and share it. You can actually add students to your Thingling. And another thing that you can do, so let me go back to my media. So another thing you can do is share. And um, you can either get a link or you can embed this. So if you're using, for example, a learning management system, you can easily embed your interactive image into that. And those were some ways that you could use ThingLink with language students. Thank you for watching.